hit me with the flashlight. Got a flashlight. Hit me with some crafty. See if he got crafty. Oh, he's got crafty, let's go. We're ready for this. Welcome back to Four Minute Film School, guys. My name is Kevin Reyes. Today I'm so stoked because we're going from this to this. Let's go, let's get it. So today we are doing a tabletop dinner scene. We're gonna have two actors kind of at a private table, but what we're gonna do, our approach here is we're gonna try to keep things more simple, but we also wanna focus on the quality of light. We're going super, super soft. We're gonna try to make this look not saucy at all. We don't wanna even know that there's a light in the frame. The way we're gonna be doing that is double breaking, putting two levels of diffusion in front of our single source. We wanna bring up our light as close as possible so that it wraps and it maintains that soft quality. Right now I wanted to kind of take you through a tour of what we have set up thus far. What's our light set up right now? First of all, we have two 300 axes on each one on each side, right and left of the camera. So we have a four by full grid, and then we have a six by magic clock with an LCD to keep it more contained. This one has a dome, and so we're already using some diffusion on it. We're just adding another four by magic clock with also an LCD to keep it contained. Even though the lights are the same color temperature, since they're the same lights, there are some diffusions that will warm up the light a little bit. Some of them make it cooler. So how do you measure? How do you do that? Well, we have a color meter and we just basically come in and we'll just measure it. You know, try to get any other spill from it, come in any other light spill. And it's telling me here it's 2098. So we'll make this warmer if we want to match this and we'll see it on the shot. Sometimes the human eye, they can't see the color differences, but the camera, once you get it into post, you'll notice, oh, there's a shift there. Yeah. On the back of the set, it looks like we had some lights being set up back here. Talk to me about kind of this setup. Since we're going to be showing all this in the background, we have practicals on it and we installed the B7C bulbs from Aperture. One of the great thing about it is like, we don't have to worry about power with this. What are some of the ways you're able to accomplish the kind of look that we're looking for on more of a maybe affordable kind of budget? We can use anything. We can use like shower curtain, bed sheets, tracing paper. I use napkins at some point and on a small bulb or something if I don't have anything else. So one thing that you have to consider every time you're diffusing light and double breaking the way we are today is that you're gonna lose a lot of output from your light. So you have to make sure that your lights are strong enough to be able to blast through both levels of diffusion and maintain a higher level of exposure, at least the exposure that we're going for today. So today we're shooting on one of my favorite cameras to shoot on, the Alexa Mini, and we're pairing that with a 35 millimeter prime in order to kind of balance um, some of the clinical and, uh, and introduce a little bit of character. I I put in the matte box a glimmer glass. It softens the image slightly, but it does offer a little bit of halation and it also maintains contrast. We are flying our camera rig on the Steadicam and one of the reasons why I love the Steadicam is because it's versatile. Not only do you get beautiful stabilization that's really organic, it allows you to get low and high. Right now we have the camera literally upside down and the reason why we have that is our amazing operator, Nick, is gonna be able to get eye level with our actors. They're sitting down and so that's gonna allow us to do just that. A lot of sets that I've been on, some of the ACs have their gaff tape kind of ready to go. And I, I was curious if you knew the way to rip a gaff tape oh, off. Yeah. So basically, you pull it out, you do like a two-third tuck with your finger, whoop it around, and then peel off like that. Oh. It's okay. So two-thirds pull that way. Yep. Like Almost. Yeah, right here. This is how. Oh, this is how. You oh, Tway's coming in to check it out. Press it down. Okay, wait, whoa. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. You gotta go like that. Finger right there. Boom. Oh, dang. I love that. That's great. I wanted kind of a full edged out kind of light and we were kind of missing that top light. So what I had Jorge come and do is add in another light. So Jorge, talk to me about how we created that top light. It's a 300X with a lantern adapter and just to be able to get to where we wanted, we used the mini boom attached to a triple riser combo stand. We could have used a manos arm, but this light is light enough for us to do something like this. So that's cool. So we've got the, the, the lantern that's given us kind of like a top light, completing this full edge light that we have both of our actors. I love, I love how upstage lighting makes it look. We needed to add a little bounce, but since we're doing a steady cam and we don't have the room to bring anything in, we asked our friends or the art department to help us out and they just put a white tablecloth on it. And it's also helping us with bouncing light. 
and fill in all the shafts. It's part of the art design, but it's also lifting the shadows. I love efficiency. I love tools that get multiple things done. You know, obviously I don't want my actors here drunk on the job and kind of slurring their lines or falling over. The way we do this is we logistically, we want to feed them grape juice, right? If you wanted to go Zinfandel, you want to get a, a apple juice, maybe dilute that with water. I mean, think about what, what is wine? It's crushed grapes. And so on camera, you'll never be able to tell that, but exactly what you're saying. We don't want to be boozing up all of our talent throughout the day. We specifically give them uh, Welch's grape. And it's good for people like me who take 15 different takes just to say hi to the camera. If we do 15 takes with alcohol, you know it's gonna be a different kind of production then. We ain't going down that route. Thank you, Moses, appreciate you. You got it, baby. All right, man. All right. So the first shot we're gonna get is kind of the standard establishing shot. We want a double, we want two people in there, and we're just gonna slow push into the table and that's gonna allow the viewer to see where we are, get a feel for the mood, and just kind of set the tone. All right, I think we're there, guys. Let's get in our marks and let's roll on this one. Okay, cool, let's move on to the next shot. We got a couple singles coming up, let's do it. So we just finished our establishing shots, really happy with how those turned out. And now we're gonna go in for some coverage. We're gonna do two dirty singles. The dirty part is the actor that's not facing the camera. We're gonna feature their shoulder as foreground in the frame. So the other thing we did was one layer of the diffusion is shaped like an octa. It's an octa frame, essentially. Again, we're going for that natural kind of look. And so we don't want any sort of weird distractions, even if it's a tiny little eye light, to go, oh, there's a there's an actual artificial light in there. No, this is a round light. That's why we're going with the octa frame and it's looking really good. We are just about to roll, but I just saw one little percentage. Our foreground was just a black, muddy blob, and I wanted it to kind of be defined. This is an actual person's shoulder, and he's talking with someone and interacting with someone. So the way we did that was we rigged an MC to a gobo arm. Jorge created kind of like an LCD, if you will, but what he did was he gaffed black tape kind of around it, and what it did was create a little bit more control so it wouldn't splash everywhere. I thought that was awesome. I noticed in the background of our shots it was looking a little flat. So what I did was I took a 60X with some barn doors on it and I flooded it and just created a splash of the same color temperature behind the lamp so it creates kind of a gradient. It's those little things you do, those little like, you know, salt bay, it's like cine bay. You just kind of like sprinkle in subtlety and little pockets of interest and it really goes into making a beautiful image. Cool, I think that's good, and cut. So we just got done with our first single, we're doing our second single, just the reverse, and we're kind of following the same formula that we use in our wide shot. Double braking, we're giving it a key, we're giving it a backlight, we're keeping things soft, and so we just have to maintain that consistency across each shot, and I'm really liking where we are so far. Crew is killing it, let's get into it and we'll roll on this. All right, that's a wrap, guys. Woo! You guys, that was so good. I love that. That was so much fun. Honestly, I love just going back to the basics, the foundational steps of lighting. I wanna know though, how would you guys go about lighting a dinner scene? Comment down below. We're gonna give away a B7C to one of you guys, so let me hear how you guys would light a dinner scene. That's it for now. I can't wait to see you guys next time. You guys have a great rest of your night, evening, around the world, wherever you are. Peace out. Let's see what 100 looks like. Okay. And that's 100%. Where were we initially? 100%. 100%? Okay, we'll keep it right there. <laughs>